Welcome back, everyone. Two weeks after taking the political world by storm, Governor Sarah Palin faced a tough test in her first television interview. ABC's Charlie Gibson asked the difficult questions, but how did she respond, and did Governor Palin make the grade? Joining us in our pundit pit, Charmaine Yost, the president of Americans United for Life Action, Brad O'Leary, author of The Audacity of Deceit, Ellis Hennekin, a Newsday columnist and Fox News contributor, and Dan Gerstein, former Lieberman communications director. Welcome to the pit, everyone. Hey, thank you. Right. All right, so the much anticipated and awaited Sarah Palin interview with Charlie Gibson last night. Charmaine, I want to start with you because you're the female on the panel. There you and go. the female was uh, under fire, she but was. we expect anyone to get the tough questions. Right, but was, right. were they fair in your mind? Well, they were fair questions. Some of the editing, I think people have really made a comment about the, the way that they presented her clips of what she had said at her church um, um, back um, before the campaign. But I thought she did a very good job of saying, hey, that's not exactly what I said. That's out of context. And here's what I did mean. And I thought it was really good, particularly uh, given some of the subtext of the campaign, the fact that she was able to address really up front this question of uh, you know, how her religion affects her public policy stances. And I thought she did a really good job of Confusing tension on that issue. Mm -hmm. Ellis, was it a, a, a very pressure filled situation for her? Did she do well? Your assessment. In what respect? I mean, it was, it was a high pressure. <laughs> no, it was that was a reference to last night. Yeah, See, when she was asked about the Bush doctrine, she had no idea what the Bush doctrine no, that's was. Not she, listen, here's the reality. She seems like a very smart lady, but she was clearly out of her depth on those foreign policy questions. Had no idea the basic underpinning of the Bush foreign policy. When asked what she'd learned from having Russia be right next to Alaska, the key thing she's been mentioning, so what she learned was that, well, Russia is right next to Alaska. It was a wobbly, uncomfortable, and kind of tense performance, I thought. Mm -hmm. Brad? I thought she was very comfortable. She answered the questions with a good deal of style. He set a couple traps for her, and she didn't fall for the traps. Mm -hmm. And she handled herself correctly, the way she should have handled herself, uh, with good answers, mm -hmm. solid answers. Well, <laughs> I mean, I think it should be no surprise after her performance at the Republican convention. She is a tough, talented politician. But as Ellis, Ellis said, she is clearly not qualified to be vice president. But the, you know, the reality is we should stop talking about this so much because um, she, in the end of the day, is going to be irrelevant. She's had a marginal impact um, on firing up the uh, Republican base. She's, uh, she's helped with white women a little bit in the polls. But we're still where we were um, before the conventions. It's a very, very close race. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be a close race through the debates. Well, the qualified comment I want to get to after the other side of the break because Barack Obama has faced those same types of questions. More from the pundit pit. We're back with our pundit Pitt, Charmaine Yost, Brad O'Leary, Ellis Hennigan, and Dan Gerstein. Before we went to break, Dan, you were talking about experience, and I think your quote was that she's obviously not ready to be vice president. But I would turn to Charmaine and ask about the experience level of Barack Obama. Would he have been asked the same question by Charlie Gibson about whether or not he had the hubris to think that he's qualified to be president, by the way, not vice president? Oh, precisely. And I was looking at the transcripts this morning as well. You know, he, he came back and she gave a very brief answer on one question. She said he said, talked about the flurry of words that she'd given. So there was a real kind of twist there as he was injecting a bias, I thought, in his response to her. But, you know, going back to the Barack Obama point is I think it really, the fact that you see Barack Obama attacking her directly, you know, the more that they talk about her, it's just really rebounding badly on Barack Obama, I think. Ellis, I mean, in a way, the McCain camp now has been able to sort of put up a shield around Sarah Palin because if you do question too much they can say well wait a minute you're, you're borderline on fine line territory here. That's right you'll notice I'm not falling for that right. <laughs> I mean, listen, this All right woman, give it to me. This woman wants to be the vice president of the United States of America. It's, it's unreasonable to whine about the press coverage or the questions were unfair. You go into the big arena. I don't think anyone's whining be asked, about it. No there's that one word of hubris. It was, been, she should be able to face the tough questions. In, in, the last, in, the last few hour, in the last few hours we're now hearing this rural vote. Gibson wasn't fair and he came back too many times on the question. You know what? If you can't handle Charlie Gibson, who frankly is about the mildest of the network anchors, maybe you're not ready to do this kind of thing. You know, well, but, thank well you the point I think Ellis is making, and I, I agree 100%, is you hear this line from the McCain campaign, why are they not letting the press talk to her? They haven't shown proper uh, decorum, de deference, and respect. Yeah. Well, I mean, they that, didn't initially. Well, well that's too bad. It's the police. <laughs> no, that's different. Though. What I've said is that this respect. is superseded politics. The idea of the way she was treated initially had nothing to do with her hey, politics. In you know, modern Grace, politics I think one is of the tough. biggest challenges for the Barack Obama campaign right now is the fact that she got so much coverage last night 
at the same time that they, as the presidential candidates, were talking about service. So you had kind of this direct competition between her talking about big issues and them talking about service. And then in the service uh, discussion, they asked John McCain if he would put Barack Obama on his cabinet. I mean, you just see a real diminishment there of his staff. You know, she's putting a shield around John McCain. You don't see Biden on anything. He you needs, see her he on everything. Well, but that's for a good reason. And Biden for, is not new. But I mean, the for big thing weeks, people have to understand about Sarah Palin is, and this is a news business, she's new. Yeah, she's and this is different. the first time. Yeah, but, but Biden, Biden is, is new the, because we sure. don't know what he stands for because he's he didn't have well, 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 We know that he thinks that Hillary Clinton maybe should have been the VP pick. Well, that's what he thinks. Let's listen to what he had to say. Hillary Clinton is as qualified or more qualified than I am to be Vice President of the United States of America. Let's get that straight. She's a truly close personal friend. She is qualified to be President of the United States of America. She's easily qualified to be Vice President of the United States of America. And quite frankly, um, it might have been a better pick than me. What? <laughs> only, only a confident guy would say it's, something like no, that. The tone, his no, tone compared to hers, right. she's not That's, and a, dead. Guy, that's night a guy and who's dead. rattled. You, when somebody gets rattled and you push him, what they're actually thinking he comes out. He was not rattled. Oh, how, is he going, how is he going Delightful. to handle her on the debate? Even the principal issue that you all scream about, which is abortion, the great majority. Well, no one has said anything great, about that. <laughs> but abortion is right. going to come up on the debates. He's going to bring it up. The, the majority of women believe abortion is manslaughter. That's by uh, Zogby Cole. Talking about but, Joe Biden, but, but you know the thing about what Biden said was he was responding to someone who was personally attacking Hillary Clinton. And you know what he did? He did a gracious gesture and he showed humility. And Ellis is exactly right. You know, it's a confident man who could sit, be honest and pay tribute to someone and say, you know what? She might have been better than me. Well, that's one way that's to look at it. That's not a gaffe. That's honesty. And well, it's absolutely. so refreshing let's in our politics. That's one way to look at it. You all have never heard this uh, before. But I think he did hesitate before he finally said, and then he was like, mm, am I about to say what I'm about to say? Yeah. Right. I, I think he was giving her kudos yeah. at the beginning. Self-deprecating a little no, bit. But then to say that she should have potentially been the pick, I think was a little different. It's well, you know what it is, we call that in the South. I think that it, it shows that the Democratic Party is misunderstanding the Palin phenomenon. Mm. He's, he was essentially saying that this was a gender thing, and I think they really, really misestimate how important her policy stances are. Brad makes a really good point Glad about how right. pro-life American women Glad are, and they are responding more to her the better. stances. <laughs> Charmaine, Brad, Ellis, and Dan, thanks so good much. Good to see you guys. Thanks. 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 Thanks.